Right now, I'm with swimming legend Ian Thorpe, a young man with a keen interest in many things, including the welfare of underprivileged Indigenous children. He's known as Thorpedo, and in his trademark black suit with those famous size 17 feet, when Ian Thorpe steps onto the starting blocks, the world waits and watches in anticipation. Ian Thorpe not only has a swag of Olympic medals, he's broken more than 20 world records and has 11 world title championships under his belt. Ian's also received numerous awards for his sporting achievements and in 2001 was the first Australian to accept the prestigious American International Athletes Award. It's a career marked by some incredible moments, but for Ian, it's difficult to pinpoint just one. Let's talk about your really remarkable career. Is there one moment that was just above everything else? When I became world champion, I was 15. And so that feeling of winning that race, it's the same, it's, it's like that each time. And then, you know, you kind of go over to Athens and then, you know, in, in defending my title, the, the same that's feeling. Same so it just, it, it seems that much bigger than the previous time. And that's, you know, that's what you strive for. That's, that's what makes those 4.17 in the morning starts worthwhile is to get that sensation. 4.17? Yeah. And what time do you leave the house? Um, at 4.32. And do you, do, you, uh, do you eat before you I train? Eat. I give myself 15 minutes. I usually take 14 minutes to actually get ready, eat mm. and be out the door. Because I'm supposed to be at the pool at quarter to five and I like to be there on time. So I'm usually there about two minutes early and just so I walk in on the right time. I've worked out that's the maximum amount of sleep I can have, and so that's why my alarm's set at 4.17 and not 4.15. And you just get straight up when yeah. it goes. Yeah, and everyone's like, why, why not 4.15? I'm like, well, <laughs> if you're getting up at that time, you want every minute you can get. At the end of the week, that's 12 minutes for me. <laughs> exactly. And the end of the, end of the month, it's close enough to being an hour, so at the end of the year, it's a whole night's sleep. <laughs> when you are training, tell me about the training regime for you. Um, it's 35 hours a week, um, which is, you know, almost, I think it's a French working week anyway. Um, but, it, you know, it, it, it's tough. Um, it's um, morning and afternoon on most days, um, swimming mm -hmm. for two to two and a half hours. And then each day I'm doing at least one activity outside of the water, whether it be weights, boxing, running, yoga. Ken and Margaret Thorpe are all too familiar with Ian's demanding training schedule. It wasn't long ago that they were dropping him at the pool every morning. But it's the support from his mum and dad, older sister Christina, and good friend and manager Dave Flaskus that sustained Ian throughout his extraordinary career. Born on the 13th of October 1982, Ian grew up in the southwest of Sydney in a happy, sports loving home. The Thorpes went on annual holidays to Foster on the New South Wales mid-north coast. Ian played soccer and cricket and he attended the local primary school. He was an average Aussie boy from an average Aussie family. Tell me about you being a good student. What were your favourite subjects? Um, I used to love geography and tech drawing. Um, I used to like art as well. So mm -hmm. all of those subjects, you know, I, I, was, I was good at all subjects. I hated maths. I was average at sport, and I mean that. Everyone looks at me and says, how can that be so? And I really was, you know, I played soccer and I played a bit of cricket, but I wasn't that good at it. And I wasn't that good at swimming until um, I was about nine as well. Both Ian and sister Christina showed early talent in the pool. Ironically, Ian had an allergy to chlorine, but by the time he was 10, he'd overcome that problem and was winning local and interstate competitions. By 12, Ian had teamed up with coach Doug Frost and was showing real improvements. Then at 15, Ian left school to pursue swimming full time. When did you realise then that you really loved it, that you felt passionate about it and it was fun for you? Um, I think I, I became passionate about it probably when I was about 13. Um, you know, I, I changed my stroke myself and so I was experimenting in the pool with, you know, what I could do and what I was capable of doing. So that was when I had this passion for how I could actually continue to improve. That's where it began.
Did Christina actually get you quite seriously involved in swimming? Do you think she was the sort of catalyst for that? Um, look, I, serious isn't the right word because I'm not serious about swimming. Um, I never have been. Ian, I'm come not. On. I'm not. It's, it's <laughs> not. I'm not serious. It's, don't try and sell me that. I'm not. That's... Sports never serious. That's the whole point. Oh, really? And I don't think you should ever take it seriously. A lot of the fans do. I know, they do, they do. But, you know, the whole thing is, is you know, I, I started doing this because I enjoyed doing it. And I still do it because I still enjoy it. Um, I'm not serious about it. it. It doesn't affect too many people what actually happens when I swim. You know, people get excited about it, they're really behind it, but it's not going to affect the outcome of what's going to happen in this year in the world and what's going to happen to everyone's life. I think if you ask most of Australia, they'd argue with you about that. Well, they can argue. <laughs> so I get the last say because it's not serious. <laughs> Did you enjoy the actual competing side? Look, I, I look at it as, you know, when I compete, um, it's my performance. It's like a, an actor preparing for a role. Um, you do all of these rehearsals and then that finished product is something that's spectacular. And no one sees all the hard work that's gone on behind it, all of the rehearsals that you've had to do that are so far from being glamorous or anything else. Yeah. But that's what swimming's like for me. You know, I'm preparing for a performance and, you know, I've done all of the hard work and it's my opportunity to shine and, you know, show off all of that hard work that I've done. Not for everyone else, but more so for myself. Are you superstitious at all? A little. A, well, I'm not superstitious, um, but I, I'm a creature of habit. I've, I've always raced with blue goggles. And so I have this thing that I race with blue goggles. At the Athens Olympics, I raced with mirrored goggles. Um, <laughs> but it was the first time I, I realised, it was the first time I'd done it for eight years. I was swimming with a pair of mirrored goggles. And it was just because of the sun in Athens. Um, so I, 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 do, I have a, a routine before I go to bed, you know, brushing my teeth and all of those things that I just do the same things. And it's, you know, I, I just have all of these little things when I'm racing that I like to do the same way. Tell me what they are. Or you don't want it to tell me. No, it's because it just makes me sound like I'm a bit obsessive compulsive. <laughs> That's all it, it does. But, you know, I, I am to an extent. Um, I have to have I have to have a spare of everything in my bag. Oh, that's good. Well, I think that's wise. But a spare of everything that isn't practical as well. Oh, I see. Yeah, and it's, you know, just in case, you know, I just want everything to be perfect. Do you get nervous before a big race? Um, I get a little bit anxious. I don't get nervous. Um, and I, I, I get this anxiety because I'm excited. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I just, I don't see what I have to be nervous about. Do you have any rituals before a major event? I mean, do you have to do things a certain way? Um, I have like a really specific way I put my swimsuit on. Mm -hmm. And it, it's now it's become, it's quite a ritual um, in how I do it, um, because it's the only way I can get the thing on now, because it's that tight. Um, but it, it, it's almost, you know, that time it takes is my time in my head just to really focus um, in on my race. Um, do you I, swim the race in your mind? Um, I have previous to that. I don't on that night. I just I want to be clear of thought because I've spent probably 10 hours at least for every minute of competition um, doing that already um, in training. So if I was to think about what I'm trying to do, I'm actually detracting myself from what I'm capable of doing because I've trained my body as best I can to perform in that race situation and my mind's only going to affect that performance. So you just think about, I'm putting on my suit? I'm putting on my suit. And, you know, when I stand up behind the blocks, I'm trying not to think of anything and take in everything. So you It's know, when, hard to empty your mind. It is, it is. Yeah, so, that's a, I mean, that's just a pretty clear big of discipline. Thought, clear of thought, so, mm. and just let your body do what it knows best. Coming up, Ian talks about his simple philosophy in dealing with the media. I'm open, I'm honest. Um, and I give about 95% and I keep the other 5% for myself because, yeah. you know, it isn't everyone's business to know everything that I'm doing. And Ian tells of being in New York during the September 11 terrorist attacks. I was at the World Trade Center about, you know, half an hour or so before it actually took place. I was getting a coffee. I walked back to my hotel and in that time, um, the first plane had hit. That's coming up when we return with swimming sensation Ian Thorpe right after the break. <laughs>